Hey everyone, you're watching We Had That, and today I'm going to talk about the Rescue Team set from the Fisher-Price Adventure People line. But before I talk about the Rescue Team set from 1976, I should mention the 1975 Rescue Truck set. The original four Fisher-Price Adventure People sets that first went on sale in 1975 were number 303, The Rescue Truck, number 304, Safari, number 305, The Rescue Copter, and number 306, The Sport Plane. The Rescue Truck was a relatively simple set. The truck itself was a white truck with a red lift basket. It only came with a few pieces in addition to the truck. It had a green stretcher, a green oxygen tank, and two figures, a fireman named Ted wearing blue pants and a blue shirt, and a blonde woman named Nancy also wearing blue pants and a blue shirt. Considering the number of these trucks I've seen over the years, I assume it was a popular set. In fact, since the Adventure People line ran well into the 80s, I suspect that all of those first four sets were quite popular. To expand on the Adventure People line, in 1976, Fisher-Price started selling smaller sets that included a couple of figures and some small accessories, but didn't include the expensive vehicles. This allowed them to get more products onto the shelves at a lower price point to introduce kids to the Adventure People line. One of the first sets released in 1976 was the Rescue Team set, which seems to have been a scaled-down version of the Rescue Truck set. As a kid, I never realized that Adventure People had been given names. I don't remember even seeing the packages that my Adventure People would have come in. It's most likely I received them as Christmas gifts, and they were removed from the packages and posed into scenes for me to see when I woke up on Christmas morning. The fireman and the nurse from the rescue team set were named Mike and Susan. Mike was the same figure as Ted that came with the rescue truck, and Susan was the same figure as Nancy, but with a different color outfit that made her look more like a nurse. The set also included a red rolling stretcher, a red medical pack that could be worn like a backpack and had a top that you could open, and a blanket bag similar to the sleeping bags that were included with the safari set from the previous year. Even though the Rescue Team set was only manufactured for a few years, there were several small variations in this set. None of the variations were very significant, but I do find it interesting that Fisher-Price decided to make these changes at all. First, the blanket bag came in at least three variations. One was solid yellow, one was yellow with a red cross logo, and a third one was white with a red cross logo. There were also two different versions of the medical pack. One had a red cross that matched the one on the blanket bag, while the other had the words first aid printed on the front with no cross. The final variation was that the nurse sometimes had a red cross printed on her chest and other times had a green cross. In addition to the Rescue Truck set and the Rescue Team set, these two figures were also available separately on two different types of cards. The cards that I liked best had a nice piece of art for each different figure. For these two, they used one piece of art that featured both the fireman and the nurse, but most of the other figures released this way had a unique piece of art for each character. The figures were also released on smaller tan cards without any artwork. From what I've seen over the years, the firemen and the nurse are two of the most common adventure people out there. That's probably because these figures were available in so many different ways over such a long period of time. The Adventure People were some of the earliest three and three quarter inch action figures on the market. In fact, the Adventure People were used as the base figure for many of the prototypes for Kenner's Star Wars action figure line. The Adventure People toy line ran from 1975 all the way through 1985. When you consider that there wasn't a movie, a TV show, or a comic book helping to get kids interested in this toy line, a decade-long run is very unusual. The Adventure People figures and vehicles were also very sturdy toys, especially compared to other toy lines that made figures in the same scale. As a kid, I had a few Star Wars figures lose their heads over the years. G.I. Joe and Buck Rogers figures lost their thumbs and the rubber bands would break, but Adventure People were rugged. As a result, there are a lot of Adventure People still around today. The two figures from this set are easy to find for a low price even now. However, the prices on carded figures and sets seems to have been going up over the last few years. When Star Wars figures first arrived in the late 70s, my Adventure People quickly became background characters or stand-ins for Star Wars figures that I didn't have. 
Susan, the nurse, could have easily been a character in my Star Wars adventures. In fact, adventure people fit in well with many of the three and three quarter inch toy lines that came out in the late 70s and early 80s. These figures enjoyed a long life throughout my childhood due to both their solid construction and their adaptability. Did you play with Fisher Price adventure people as a kid? Which ones did you have, and which sets or figures are your favorites? Tell me in the comments below. Also, please give this video a like, share it on social media, and if you enjoy my content, please subscribe to my channel and hit that notifications bell. And one last thing, if you collect toys, you should know about Toylanta, one of the biggest toy shows in the southeastern United States, held annually just north of Atlanta, Georgia. Visit Toylanta.com for more information. As always, thanks for watching.